All Joe Burrow and the Bengals do is win. Another superb performance in the postseason from Burrow and the Bengals as Cincinnati dominated the Buffalo Bills from the jump and since he's moving on to its second straight AFC championship game. And look, Joe Burrow has changed everything. Joe Burrow on Sunday was a certified killer, a surgeon, a megastar. And you look at what Joe Burrow did, what Joe Burrow did with Joe Mixon, what Joe Burrow did with three backups on the offensive line, and it didn't even matter. My goodness, that that was something special. And you think about Cincinnati. This is who they are. This is what they do. They went to the Super Bowl last year. They're going to the Super Bowl this year. The balance on offense with Joe Mixon supporting Joe Burrow. Jamar Chase catching touchdowns. It's just incredible watching Cincinnati function. It's like a symphony. It is so incredible watching Joe Burrow and company go to work. And when Mixon demoralizes you and Burrow absolutely kills you, I mean, this this is awesome. Five yards a rush with three backup offensive linemen. They allowed one quarterback sack. And let me tell you, don't let what I said about beating Patrick Mahomes and company just fall by the wayside here they're beating Patrick Mahomes and company and I was going to pick them even before the injury I said the Bengals Bills winner going to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl but we're talking about a hobbled Patrick Mahomes we're talking about a high ankle sprain he's able to come back in that game and beat Jacksonville based upon adrenaline there is no way that Joe Burrow is losing on Championship Sunday. He already beat the Kansas City Chiefs in Arrowhead last year on Championship Sunday in come-from-behind fashion. He already beats the Kansas City Chiefs this year. Once again, in the postseason, doing it on the road, it's Joe Burrow's time to shine. Oh, it sucks. Josh Allen telling it like it is. The Buffalo Bills were as flat as an absolute pancake in Sunday's embarrassing, grotesque loss to the Cincinnati Bengals at home on CBS. And look, we started the show with the Bengals, obviously, and they deserve the credit first and foremost, and they were dominant. The Buffalo Bills were horrible. Josh Allen didn't play great. Stephon Diggs was a non-factor. He was obviously frustrated, and rightly so. The offensive line was terrible. Ken Dorsey was terrible. I don't blame Stephon Diggs to be okay at the end of the day when it comes to losing. And he was heated because he wants the ball in order to win. James Cook wasn't even allowed in the kitchen. Devin Singletary will never wear a Buffalo Bills jersey again. Ken Dorsey, how do you not run the ball with Josh Allen? This is what we talked about all last week. My goodness. Five, seven designed runs. Let's go. Josh missed easy throws. And listen, we have a problem here in lovely Western New York. 2020, that was a mess. And they had an opportunity to win that game. But Sean McDermott kept kicking field goals. Then they took a step back in the divisional round. 13 seconds. McDermott botched that one too. And then they didn't even post. They got destroyed. It wasn't even a close game. 2021, all right, we'll get him next year. Sign Von Miller, we'll be fine. No, and this is all on Sean McDermott. Simple as that. And if you look at the landscape of the coaches, coaching in the divisional round, seven offensive coaches. The other was Sean McDermott. And the Buffalo Bills officially have a Sean McDermott problem. Now, I'm not suggesting the Bills need to fire Sean McDermott. What I am saying is Sean McDermott needs to change. And this has been a constant commentary from me from a long time. For a long time now on Sean McDermott, going back to Championship Sunday in 2020, going back to the kick with 13 seconds and then the defense at the end in regulation. It wasn't about a flip of the coin for overtime. It was about Sean McDermott's coaching. That cost the Buffalo Bills last year division round against Kansas City, cost them an opportunity to go to the Super Bowl and win it. The coaching, not kicking the field goal at home against Minnesota. That was a mess before 
Josh Allen threw an interception. Because if they were able to beat Minnesota, then who knows? Maybe we're talking about the one seed. Maybe we're talking about playing Jacksonville. It was all there. And then the defense. I mean, you're the only defensive coach coaching in the divisional round, and your defense got ripped apart by Joe Burrow. Even last year, the divisional round, Mike Vrabel, he was the one seed. Tennessee Titans, that's a defensive coach. They sacked Joe Burrow nine times. It's about the offense. They didn't get it done. So Sean McDermott's got to do a better job in terms of in-game coaching. You're down two scores on Sunday. It's fourth and two. You're paying Josh Allen oodles of dollars. He's one of the highest paid players in the NFL. He's an ox. He's Paul Bunyan. He's John Elway. He's Nolan Ryan. Put the ball in Josh Allen's hands. Stop punting. The defense needs to be better. The offense needs to be better. I mean, also, and you saw the tweets from Stephon Diggs, you had Von Miller, a lot of players, including Diggs, wanting to go to Buffalo, ring hopping. No one's going to Buffalo if there's not a chance to win and win a championship. And now, Look at the landscape. Miami could get a different quarterback. Jets could get a different quarterback. Both these teams in the division beat the, beat the Buffalo Bills in the regular season. And Miami almost beat them twice in Buffalo, regular season and postseason. So then you think about, obviously, Mahomes and Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert and Trevor Lawrence. We'll see if Lamar Jackson's healthy and he goes back to Baltimore. Deshaun Watson. You see where I'm going with this? The window is closing. It was all there. There. This was supposed to be the year we jumped through a table because the Bills won a championship. This was a failure. This was a mess. This was a problem. This was unacceptable. And it's all Sean McDermott's fault. San Francisco. What a treat. Brock Purdy and the 49ers. They keep the good times rolling right into the NFC Championship game with an impressive division round win over Dallas. And look, we'll stress the negative on the Cowboys later. I think it's important today to make sure we give the 49ers credit. And Christian McCaffrey. The team is now 12-0 with Christian McCaffrey as he started running back. And Listen, the GOAT is loving it, Jerry Rice, and why wouldn't you? Because all this team does is win, and all Brock Purdy does is win. And Brock Purdy is not going to be intimidated by the juggernaut-loaded Philadelphia Eagles. He's not going to be intimidated by the Philadelphia Eagles hostile crowd. I'm telling you right now. You see the nuggets of domination and jubilation on the screen. Brock Purdy's undefeated as a starter. Christian McCaffrey is undefeated as a running back. Brock Purdy has unique talent and coaching around him that is special. The Niners have a better defense than the Philadelphia Eagles. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a major challenge. But I'm telling you, Brock Purdy and the 49ers are going to the Super Bowl. Welcome back. Time to shine. We have a lot to talk out on a Tuesday. Starting with the Dallas Cowboys. Can Dallas win a Super Bowl with Dak Prescott at quarterback? Let's talk this out. No. No, they can't. And I told you Dak was going to throw a couple of early interceptions against San Francisco because he pitched the perfect game in the wild card round, but that was against Tampa. A bad football team, and we said it one week ago. Credit him for what he did against Tampa Bay, and he deserved credit, but it was not going to be a trend because Tampa's terrible, San Fran is the best, and Dak's a double agent. He turns it over left and right. Most interceptions this season. And look, Dak Prescott can't get it done in the playoffs. And whatever word choice and energy that we use, anyone else uses, in describing Kirk Cousins, that should be the same thing when it comes to Dak Prescott. Now, it's not all Dak's fault. I mean, I've watched this what feels like a thousand times just because I like laughing and Ezekiel Elliott getting thrown back. 10 yards, what, what, what the hell is this? And Dalton Schultz, you know, didn't know how to run out of bounds and, you know, didn't get his foot down. Some goofy stuff, including that from Mike McCarthy at the end. But, you know, obviously Dak, the team never replaced Amari Cooper, which is a shame. They haven't been to the championship game since 1995. 1995! That was the year I graduated high school and started as a freshman at Syracuse. 
So, it's obviously bigger than Dak, and it's about Jerry Jones employing Jerry Jones as the general manager, but look, he's quarterback 8 through 16 in the NFL. He's a really good to great player, but like Kirk Cousins, he cannot be trusted in big spots. So, Dak Prescott is not going to elevate the team, not going to take you to another level, not going to protect the football, and they cannot win a Super Bowl with Dak Prescott as the quarterback. Tons of offseason question marks for the New York football giants, most notably the futures of Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. So, should the Giants bring back Jones and Barkley? Let's talk this out. It's only about the Benjamins. That's it. Jones was strong. Barkley bounced back, stayed healthy. Daniel Jones was atrocious against Philadelphia. Phenomenal, obviously, Daniel Jones was against Minnesota. But Daniel Jones had a really good season, took to the coaching for Kafka and Brian Dable. But the first three years of his career were dreadful. And remember, when it comes to Jones and Barkley, the guy who drafted him, Dave Gettleman, funny, don't find any Dave Gettleman truthers since they got destroyed against Philadelphia. You know, the guy who drafted him is no longer there. So Saquon enjoyed a remarkable season, and he deserves credit. I would be very hesitant to pay Saquon Barkley major money, give him a long-term commitment based upon his position, based upon his injury history. You know, Daniel Jones, what is he going to do? Is he going to go to the to the New Orleans Saints? You know, are they daydreaming about Daniel Jones in, in Tampa Bay? Think about it this way. You want to talk this out for a second? No team needs a quarterback more to get him to the next level than the Jets. Would the New York Jets ever offer Daniel Jones a contract? The answer is hell no. So if I'm Daniel Jones, I'm telling my agent, get the most money possible from the Giants. I don't believe in Daniel Jones as the long-term answer. I think he could be short-term a solid solution. Give Joe Shane and Brian Dayball credit. They made the division around year one of a massive rebuild. We talked about this last week in anticipation of the Giants losing, but you can bring them back on your terms. And finally, if you're a Giants fan, you have adults in charge, smart people in charge. The Dave Gettleman era is a thing of the past. Joe Shane and Brian Dayball will get this right. You bring them back only if it makes dollars and cents. Hey, the New England Patriots hired a real offensive coordinator today, bringing back old friend Bill O'Brien. So, can Bill O'Brien fix the New England Patriots offense? Let's talk this out. Well, the answer is yes. The answer is absolutely. This is a great day to be a Patriot fan. Great day to be Mac Jones, who played and starred for Bill O'Brien at Alabama. Bill O'Brien has obviously done a brilliant job with the Crimson Tide of working for Nick Saban. And he previously was fantastic running the offense for Bill Belichick. And Mac Jones, I feel terrible for Mac Jones. Terrible for him. Because year two didn't count. I mean, they gave him Matt Patricia. A failed Lions head coach and a defensive guy and a stupid pencil to run the offense. It was the worst coaching calculation in the history of the NFL. Bill Belichick let Matt Patricia run the offense. Mac Jones was so much better as a rookie than he was in his second year. Now, they still need help in terms of players and personnel, but Belichick knows this. This was a fantastic day to be a New England Patriots fan, and Bill O'Brien for Mac Jones year three is everything. A lot of smoke around a possible Aaron Rodgers trade. Now, again, I'm on record. If I'm the Packers, should never happen. Should never happen. But it's the Packers, and they don't know which way is up. So if the Packers wrongly trade Aaron Rodgers, what teams would make the most sense? Let's talk this out. We have a list for you. The New York Jets would become a Super Bowl team with Aaron Rodgers, and I think he would be a rock star in New York. Look, we'll get to Tom Brady later in the show, but if I'm the Raiders, I would give up the draft pick 
to go get Aaron Rodgers. He would sell tickets, reunite him, obviously, with Devontae Adams. I think Tennessee, he would change everything when it comes to that franchise. Same with the Miami Dolphins. Now, I'm putting New England on there because, you know what? I'm only throwing AFC teams on this list, and it would be so Belichick to do something like that. I don't think it's going to happen, but it's a list of five teams that make sense. But if the Packers are that foolish and want to trade Aaron Rodgers and they should keep him and try to win the Super Bowl next year, the Jets, the Raiders, the Titans, those are the three teams to watch all in the AFC, and he would change everything for those franchises. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.